Welcome back guys and in today's video we're going to have a look at the Japanese pond turtle so um, stay tuned. Right, so the Ishigami, the Japanese stone turtle or also known as the Japanese pond turtle are an aquatic turtle from a few different regions in Japan such as Kaishu, Shikoku and Honshu. They live in cold ponds and lakes, but they also live in man-made features such as irrigation ditches and rice paddy fields. An awesome fact about Japanese pond turtles is they can actually hibernate underwater. Now you may think quite a few turtles do this, but the way they do it is slightly different. They manage to breathe through their tails, so they absorb the oxygen through their tails, which I find incredible. I haven't obviously experienced this personally, so if you have, let me know because it'd be really interesting. The more information about these guys I know, the better. But also, another fun fact about Japanese pond tails is they can actually withstand extremely cold temperatures. So they can still be seen active about five degrees. So I think that's absolutely phenomenal if they're still just swimming around. Again, I haven't tested that. They're kept in this warm, nice shed, which is mostly around 20 degrees because it's also got the Roti Island over there. And it's got another jack there. It's got hands over here and we've got secure behind us. And if you haven't uh, been watching the recent videos, I had to separate them. I saw a bit of aggression, so they're in separate tanks now. But you will see both of them about and they're both very happy still. Now, correct me if I'm wrong again, but their scientific name is Myremes japonica and females will grow to about eight inches. So we have Secure behind us. So she's gonna get a bit bigger. We've got hands over there. He will grow to around five and a half inches, slightly bigger, slightly smaller. With both of them, size is gonna vary just off of what I've just said. But they're gonna to get to roughly that size, which I think is absolutely incredible. So they're not the biggest, but they're not the smallest by far. And also, by far, probably the most impressive fact about Japanese pond turtles is they can actually eat on land. So a bit like um, your less aquatic turtles, they can eat on land. They are one of one of the only, if not the only, aquatic turtles which can eat out of the water. So that is just fantastic. I'm sure you guys have seen it cinnamon and mealworms up in the basket thing in some of the previous videos. Right guys, so I know the lighting isn't the best. Move my paperwork out of the way. But as you can see, the girl she needs a bit of a shed okay you can see the nice browny green colors they kind of vary there's different patterns if I get the front of her show in you can kind of see here that nice black black bit down the spinal bit and you can see the greens the olives the browns and it's just a nice color variation absolutely fantastic what's also cool is they've got a nice olive olive head with on secure here if I can get her close enough you can actually see now hopefully she doesn't bite my finger see the patterns on the side of her face as well which is fantastic and the best bit about her is this awesome charcoal belly it's absolutely amazing and I'll probably show the tail because it's a bit easier you might be able to see it a bit easier actually maybe not but on the legs if she kicks out on the back bit you can see, let's see if she does it again, that kind of line up the back here, that nice orange line. Now down all of her feet, I'll try and get it in the camera a bit better. The lighting's not the best, I put on the G's again, but that on her feet and her arms, or front, front legs, you can see nice charcoal legs, but also that yellowy line. So you've got two lines down on the tail here, which is amazing, and on all the legs and a bit down on her neck as well. But another feature, the way I can tell she's a girl, is she has this nice little V shape here, okay? Well, it's Hanzo, I know Hanzo's a boy because I've seen, but he has a U, a U shape, which is absolutely incredible. So that's the way I can tell male and female on the Japanese Huntails, as well as Sakura is a lot bigger now. I'm gonna go put her back in her tank. We'll see if we can get Hanzo out and see if, um, See what he kind of looks like so you can see the difference. Also I forgot to mention when they're hatchlings as well, Japanese pond turtles are renowned for having extremely long tails. And I'll see if I can find a video 
and post it somewhere now if I can of when those in their habitat as babies and you can see how long this tail really is. Absolutely fantastic. Let's see if I can get hands out. So we can see Hanzo is a lot smaller, okay? And hopefully you guys can kind of see if I get him a bit closer. It's not as much of a V here, it's more of a U shape. Oh, that's a bit better. It's more of a U shape. And that's one way I can tell he is a boy. Now, if I can get into the light a bit better, you can see on Hanzo, the nice browns, the yellows, and olive colors, and greens. It, that's kind of just to camouflage into the floor naturally. So it's absolutely great, fantastic cover from any predators. Mind you, saying that, in their natural habitat, they are the natural predators. There's nothing that really kind of goes at them. Right guys, before I carry on, I just want to say thank you for all your support. Please subscribe, we want to push those numbers up. We want to be the number one turtle whisperers on YouTube. Also, if you've got any questions, please comment them down below. It gives me video ideas and I can produce more content for you lot. And give us a like, just shows that you like liking the stuff. If there's anything you don't like on the other hand, also comment there because then I can try and change it and make the videos better. So if you didn't like my intro, for example, just say. Now in terms of behaviour, these two are kind of really remarkable. So you've got Sakura here, who, when she was a lot younger, she was a lot more shy. She would hide in that actual cave just there and all, all around in the plants, like behind. Okay, whereas Hanzo was always flying about the tank, basking and everything. Sakura wouldn't really bask. Whereas now I've actually separated them, Sakura's confidence has grown a lot and she's actually on the basking area. So maybe she's not as frightened because Hanzo's not in the tank, I don't know. But Hanzo's still his normal self, he's a bit more shy because I think he's feeling a bit lonely. Obviously we all know turtles don't get lonely, they're solitary creatures. And here she is behind me, trying to say hello, she's hungry probably. It's, uh, today is the day of feeding, so hopefully we can get that in. See, you can definitely see the size difference between her and Hanzo, which is another reason for me separating them as well. We don't, we don't want any accidents, it's better to not have or reduce the risks. But in terms of Japanese pond turtles in general, if you're thinking of getting them as a turtle, they are super fun and personable pets, okay? I'd stay on the computer gaming late at night, let's say I finished at one in the morning, they'd still be sat on the basking platform just watching me, it was a bit creepy, but very personable animals, they have each got their own personality. It's a bit like Willie the snake net who's always flying about trying to find me. But these guys oh, definitely got personalities of their own. But I could absolutely watch them for hours. Right, I'm not sure if we're gonna see hands. I, I have turned off the bubble machine so we can try. We can see him just kind of sat just over there somewhere. Hopefully he doesn't go hide away. But in terms of caring for Japanese pond turtles, he's gone and hid under the basking. Basking ramp, he's a bit shy. So from a young, young age, Japanese pond turtles are very good swimmers. That being said, if you're getting a hatchling or a young juvenile, definitely have a smaller tank, such as this tub where they can quickly reach the surface. Even that's probably a bit deep for hatchlings, you'd have it a bit lower. I have got a video on that, go check that out, like water heights. It's got a little measuring thing in the thumbnail, so just go check that. You're gonna want plenty of plastic plants and rocks to climb on, such as what we've got here. Maybe not real plants, they will probably mess them up, okay? And definitely when they're older, they're trying to eat the veg. So I've invested in some plastic ones, some Exoterra ones, and they're doing just fine. Once they're a bit older, you're probably gonna want a four foot tank. So let's go have a look. So a four foot tank would be something like this. Okay, well, something like this. This is a four foot tank four foot by two foot, or just under by two foot high, okay? And that, that's enough to house one adult. Any more in there, you're gonna want a bigger tank, okay? Obviously, my two, when they was in there, they're not full adults, and it was a bit cramped for them, because you can see how big Secure is compared to Hanzo. But hopefully, one day, I'm gonna have a nice outdoor pond, 
where they can just roam free essentially and they have plenty of space. They're also going to need a basking area, whether it's a built-in one, okay. So yeah, you've got the built-in basking area or you've got the floating one, which was in Hand Zone's one or the Roti Islands if you've seen his. You're also going to want the correct lighting. I'm not going to go into too much detail for this because I've got other videos I've been through it before. So your UVA, UVB. You're going to want filtration, which is three times the size of the tank because we all know how messy animals, or not animals, turtles and tortoises are. Turtles in this case. And you're going to want a heater. Now in terms of heating Japanese pond turtle tanks, I would have them about 24 degrees. Okay, hatchlings might be 25, 26, but, but you do not actually have to have the heater on. These guys are capable with the lower temperatures. It's only because I have the Roti Island and they're in this kind of tropical kind of shed that I have the higher temperatures. But like I said, I'm looking forward to putting them in an outdoor pond. Now, obviously I keep these guys in a, an aquatic kind of setup. I play them in an aquatic tank, which is mainly water and a little bit of basking area. Okay, I have actually started seeing people put these in kind of a wood turtle setup, so mostly land and a bit, only a bit of water, and they're actually thriving in these setups. Some people may disagree, that's absolutely fine, it's what kind of works for you and your turtles, but I'm just saying, I've seen it personally, that it works, so it's all about trying out and making sure you've got what's best for your turtle. So in terms of diet, staple diet of turtle pellets okay that's absolutely crucial so most of the feeding days they'll be on turtle pellets and then every so often some weekend pellets for to help their shedding okay you can see secure needed a shed with little white patches but also live food every so often so you can see i've got mealworms here i've got some crickets behind that's good for getting protein but every so often okay also supplement them, there should be somewhere in the tank a nice big chunk of cuttle bone, okay? That just helps them get the extra calcium. And also, as they're getting older, vegetation. So I use romaine lettuce as one of my bits of veg I feed secure. Hanzo doesn't really take it as much. Okay, hopefully when it grows a bit older. Yeah. That's another video I've done if you can't get your turtle to eat something. Just try, it's all about trying different things. And they don't necessarily in the wild eat every day as well, so you can also feed bits of prawn and fish, but that is very occasionally as they're very fatty, oily, and but it got a lot of protein in them. We don't want our turtles to grow too big too quick, okay? Otherwise they can kind of get pyramid in or abnormal shell problems. In terms of like feeding schedule, I feed Japanese pond turtles every other day, okay? I have done since they've been juveniles. Hatchlings I do every day because you kind of want to increase their chances of survival but every other day and potentially in the future every three days when they're a bit older okay we don't want our turtles to be overweight that's an absolute no go that creates its own set of problems itself in terms of handling okay turtles and tortoises don't really like to be handled tortoises do like a big old scratch on the neck or the head, make sure they don't take the fingers off though. The turtles aren't as much or aren't as keen at being handled, okay. That being said, whenever I do water changes, always just check the turtle over and okay? make sure there's no problems, infections or anything. And just make sure that the shell's in perfect condition. So in terms of breeding these guys, hopefully hands on's got to get a bit older yet and so secure. But hopefully it's going to happen, okay? And we're going to get some eggs. But we know hands as a boy for sure. We know secure as a girl, so some fingers crossed. Obviously, I haven't got any personal experience as of yet, but I know mating season is from, I believe, September to April the following year. And girls can actually lay four clutches of up to, I think it's three to eight eggs. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, it all kind of depends on the size of your female. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed that quick hair guide on how I raise my Japanese pond turtles. If you've got any questions, pop them below. If you need to correct me on anything, again, pop it below. I'm trying my best uh, to give you the information and what works for me so far. And if there's any videos you want to see or any specific species of turtle you want to see, 
pop it below again. Hope you've enjoyed. Oh, hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've enjoyed Total Whispers, and I'll see you next time.